Um, we're going to go to hour two. Uh, if you didn't listen the first time to the first hour, you need to go back and listen because it's it's my 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 friend Jen who um, I'm crazy about and adore who knows everything there is to know about um, true crime. Uh, just incredible knowledge, and literally, I could just name a case and she go, "Yes, I know it all," and she does. Um, here's the one that okay this. I, 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 it's it's very fascinating to me, but that I don't know every single last detail. So I for sure need your help on this one. But it is the most fascinating one to me. It's, you know, I think you called it, oops, we lost our baby on a camping trip. So. Oh, yes. The It's Dior Kunz. I, I don't know if I'm yeah, saying it right. Okay. little Dior Kunz Jr. Okay. So you go ahead and describe this because. Uh, this this one blows my mind. I mean, I think it's pretty simple. I mean, it's just basically a game of Clue, um, but you go ahead and describe it. Okay, so little Dior Cunt, he was two years old. Um, it was July. His parents took him on a camping trip to Idaho Falls, and their story is we were at Timber Creek Campground. We were camping with Grandpa and a friend, and oops, we lost our baby. Now that's how the story begins. Yes, the I guess the, the the thing that's so interesting about this is none of the four people that were there they don't talk to each other anymore, right? Right. Yeah, they've had a falling out. I mean, even even the parents are, you know, completely estranged. That the whole family this has just broke them all up because they're covering up this horrible thing and they really don't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to the private eye as the story goes on, I mean, he will tell you that. These people do not tell the same story twice. I mean, they don't even tell the same story. He's asked them nine different times. He'll get nine different stories from each of them. And I guess – now, why don't you the, – the, the, the private investigator, who was he originally hired by? Okay, so the parents, um, after going through the tearful pleas in front of the camera, help us find our baby, you know, we, we just lost him, help us find him. The, the police are not looking at them at this time as suspects. They make the PR move to hire their own private investigator. They think this will be great, this will help us. And what happens is the private investigator comes on. He's really good. He starts investigating things, and everything in his mind starts leading him back to the parents. That becomes problem for the parents that have hired him. And he has got like audio recordings and um He does. He was very smart. He decided he was gonna build an investigation from the ground up. He threw out everything the police had said from the get go, anything the media had said, and he started with we lost our baby at the campground and he built literally an investigation off that. He did everything himself. He audioed them supposedly videoed them and i mean they were on board with him at first so i mean they kind of waived consent to a lot of the stuff i think and he has he he says it goes back to the parents and he's been kind of i mean i understand what he's doing i mean he, he's trying to bring some justice but he's also trying to make a buck off it you know and he is now don't get me wrong he is a person that knows how to make a dollar and he will he loves to utilize media he loves to throw you know, little catchy things out there that he thinks will bring in revenue, but he claims that the revenue goes back into the investigations. That's how people can't really drag him is because he claims that it, it all goes back to baby Dior. Well, I know that he did for um, some station there, or whatever he, he gave them like a clip or something. And, but I, I, I feel like he doesn't do, he's doing it. So he gets more work and he's had more work than he can handle and, and stuff like that. And, I just – I feel like he's just teasing. He should just say I, – I think that he wants like a pay-per-view special or like Investigation Discovery or Netflix or somebody to, to buy all his video and audio and, and make – Yeah, I mean that's the problem I have with him. He has been teasing for the longest time. I mean literally maybe eight months after he got on this case, he started saying that I know – allegedly where the body is you know she the mother could take you to it perhaps i could take you to it you know i'm going to release approximately 15 hours of video and audio recordings in connection to this case and it's going to blow everyone's mind well people keep waiting on that so 
it's almost like he is trying to get a network on board. I mean, the guy's definitely trying to make a bigger name for himself. And at this point, he's coming across as wanting to be maybe a celebrity. Well, you know, because he says he's he's gonna he says he's going to release fifteen hours of the video and audio, right? So yes. if he's got fifteen, that means he's got way more than fifteen if he's going to release the fifteen. So exactly, yeah. you know, I think making a murder was like ten episodes or something like that, and the staircase mm-hmm. one was that long. And by the way, what do you think of all the? Uh, do you like all the ones that they're doing on Netflix? Do you watch them all? I have not watched them all. Have you watched have any not. of them? No, I don't think so. Have you? Did you even watch like Making a Murder? No. Okay. So I think that, but that I think that's what he's trying to do because each one of these is like six or eight or ten episodes, and they're usually an hour long, and that's how much stuff he's got. And I, I think that that's why he's teasing it all, and he just keeps hoping that one of these true crime documentary producers is going to say, "Oh, we'd love to have it. We'd love to have it." And then he'll say, well, I can't give it to you now because I've signed a deal or a contract and, you know, I don't actually own them anymore. So they're going to be shown on this channel. That's what I think he wants to do. It doesn't take away from the fact that the four people don't talk to each other anymore. Obviously, one of them is guilty. But I think that unless they actually confess, the police can't decide whether it's an accident or a murder. So it kind of leaves them in a bind, right? Yeah, I mean, unless he gives them some type of compelling evidence and it pans out or someone confesses, I mean, yeah, no body, no crime. They they absolutely, I mean, the police have nowhere to go from here. They can continue to watch the parents, but that's about it. Because if you think about it, a lot of times, and, you know, you can just look at, like, Mark Peterson or something like that. I mean, you don't always need a body to convict. However, in this case, if you have a body that you can't find and you have four suspects rather than one, (laughs) you can't, you can't really, you can't really determine anything. So, well, right. Cause you can't convict them all. I mean, they're going to say, well, you know, they, they could easily get out of that. I mean, legally they could wiggle out of that. So it's going to take someone confessing, someone rolling on each other for them to even get the ball rolling on trying to, pin this crime to them without having a body. And so you say to yourself, well, why don't we just arrest them and charge them with murder? But the thing is, you have to have probable cause. No judge is going to say that one of them murdered them. So you're not going to, you know, I think in a, in a TV movie kind of world or a world that doesn't really exist, somebody go, let's just arrest them and charge them with murder and we'll get one of them to turn on the other. Right. But you can't actually right. arrest them to do that. Um, and there's nothing to like in the case, going back to the one we talked about last episode, about the, the John with the identity theft and things like that, they have nothing to put them in jail for for anything. So yeah, like these these people have allegedly no other outstanding crime, so they'd have no reason to hold them. So, and you know that's really I think their only hope is that somebody gets pulled over for something or domestic violence, some kind of arrest where they can just try. Um, the it, does it kind of remind you? Of the the Madeline McCann thing at all? It does so much. I mean, the yeah, these cases they mirror each other because you know it, it's again it's like you know you don't have it and you know you've got multiple people and you have each other covering and and things like that. So I feel like well, it, do you think it was an accident or do you think it was murder? I think it was an accidental homicide. I think they got up to the campground and perhaps no one was actually paying as close attention to the child as they should have been. I mean, if they left him with grandpa, grandpa's old. I mean, the baby could have wandered off and drowned. I mean, there was lots of bodies of water around. He could have, you know, an animal could have got him. I mean, there's so many things that you could, you know, play with in your mind that happened. Maybe he fell down and bumped his head. Maybe the parents freaked out and they hid the body. I mean, you've seen, I've seen cases like that. So, I mean, there's like a litany of things that could have happened, but I do think that it's accidental homicide. So, for somebody who's listening and accidental homicide, um, so would you think that something like, like Kaylee Anthony, Casey Anthony, was, do you think that that was accidental homicide? 
Thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. You can uh, catch my blog seven days a week, crazydaysandnights.net. Over a 100 posts, updates every single day. Uh, social media, you can find me at NT Lawyer on Instagram and on Twitter. And, of course, you can subscribe to Patreon for the full episode at patreon.com backslash NT Lawyer.